I think we're working. Hi there. Welcome to Work With Me Wednesday. It is, it's not the 25th, it's the 26th. I don't know what day of the week it is. It's May though, uh, which means seven more months until Christmas. Yay. Hi, welcome. Uh, my name's Lana. I am the owner, creator, chief bottle washer. Hi, Betty of the um, Hartmont Candle Company and my glasses are dirty. So I got everything, I was so busy getting everything else prepared that I forgot to clean my glasses so that I could actually see what's going on. How you doing Betty, you doing good today? What a cold and dark and dreary day in comparison to, I don't know, a couple of days ago when it was hot and muggy. I think we had humidity here in Gimli because the lake is right here. But we had humidity of like 98%, which is like this close to raining. But anyways, today you're like, what fun things are we doing today? Today I need to do some airbrushing. So hopefully my, I have my handy dandy hair airbrush here, not hair, air. Um, and hopefully that'll work for me today. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I've already shown everybody this. But no, I haven't because that was the video where I had a whole conversation with my phone for 20 minutes and then realized I hadn't turned on the light. So go me, I am special, what can I say? Okay, so uh, welcome to this week. It's been a crazy week again here in Manitoba. We're under shutdowns and lockdowns. They've extended them. I have no idea if and when I'm gonna do a farmer's market, like none. I'm making stuff, I'm preparing stock, I'm filling orders but it is so difficult to figure out what to make for when, when you have no idea if there's gonna be a market. For sure the Arnez market is delayed. Hi Sherry, welcome. Um, we don't know till when. Uh, I'm gonna assume it's when restrictions are lifted enough that we're not, or they're not monitoring how many people are coming in because it's like basically an open field, like at a farmer's yard. Uh, but then it begs the question of how did they run last year when supposedly we were in a worse part of the pandemic, but then cases are higher now, but we're vaccinated. So I don't know, can't even get into it. But anyway, so trying to get ready for that, the farmer's hall, which is um, on, <laughs> I think I said this last week, I should learn the name of the highway, but it's like Chud's Corner going that direction, west. Um, about, I don't know, I wanna say a mile, two miles where there's the red uh, farm hall. They have a farmer's market Thursday nights. They're slated to start on this coming Thursday, not tomorrow, but the next one. So like June 3rd or 4th, whatever it is. Um, but again, we don't know if that's gonna be allowed to happen. Um, I, as a brand, because uh, as I'm starting to do more of the social media and people are saying, what is your brand? Who's your ideal customer? And all these things, and we're thinking about that. Uh, I realized that what part of my brand is um, caring for like what happens to my customer, what happens to my end user, like making their lives uh, smell nicer, more of a, a relaxed atmosphere, creating like a wonderful environment for them in their home, whether it's like in burning a candle or a soak in the tub or while you're showering, all of these things. So I have a slight issue with going to a market saying, hey, come on out and shop when there are stay at home orders in effect. Like that's a conflict for me. So as long as there's the stay at home thing going on, I'm like, okay, I'm not doing markets. But what's happened this week is they say the stay at home is in place until Saturday midnight, <laughs> which means I don't know. Are they gonna make another announcement on Friday? Who knows? It's very, very uncertain times. And I'm just giving you a window into what a small business is actually going through when you say, well, okay, you've got like you're closed for however many weeks, it's not the being closed, like yes, that's part of it, but it's also not knowing when you can start to function again a little bit, just a little bit. We're not asking for the whole enchilada here. Just to be able to do like a pop-up 
and uh, be able to invite your customers out to do that. So if you hear clicking around, that's my gal Molly. She's come to see who I'm talking to in the kitchen. She's like, and is there food here? And I'm like, no, there is not. So if you hear doggy, doggy footprints, that's Molly. She's out and about today cruising around. Okay, so barring all that, I have no idea what to tell you about the farmer's markets. Um, I will post on social media, uh, like Instagram and Facebook and on the webpage when um, I decide when I'm starting or when we're allowed to start. Okay, so that's covered. All right, so cute molds. I don't know if I've showed you this one before, but this is a super cute one. And it is a bath bomb. And it is pink lips. And it's all, it starts out as, to give you some of the process, it starts out as this color, like your, your pinky, smells good. Uh, Enchanted is the scent of this one. I think I have Chanted and Cupcakes and Cookies. Um, I airbrush um, the highlights on the exterior, like to brighten it up and to give it some pop. And then I hand paint the, um, the glossy highlights on it. So that's um, a, a bath bomb. On another Work With Me Wednesday, I'm gonna show you the difference between bath bomb re recipes. It's really, really fascinating. Um, as I delve into it, uh, I tried a new recipe and I just did a comparison between my current milk recipe and this other one to see what the difference was. Huge, huge difference. Not just in the fizzing, not just in the foaming, but also in the feel and the, um, and the slip and the glide, if that makes any sense of the water. That's a little bit harder to explain, but to do a side-by-side -side, uh, photo with like a, bo uh, a bowl of water and a bowl of water and the two different uh, bath bombs in it, it really gives you the visual of, ah, oh, bath bombs are not all alike. Just like candles aren't all alike. Everybody's like, oh, a candle is a candle is a candle. No, it depends on your wax. It depends on um, your wick, it depends on your scents. All of mine, like from the wax to the scent, maybe not so much the wick, but um, the wax and the scent, I've all custom blended, whoops, to make uniquely my own. So there's lots of really neat and interesting differences between them. But to get started, so I did the pink lips and I had somebody comment to me, I think it was through uh, my webpage. They're like, are you ever gonna do more uh, mature kind of um, scents and of course so I've got my lavender so I was like well let's do lavender mist that's a nice soft pretty one um, but what shape am I supposed to do it I do have a flower mold coming but it's not really a lavender kind of mold so I kind of don't really want even want to use that but I can do purple lips so I've got my very base recipe here I think this one I've airbrushed once. Okay, so kind of like a cooking show. This will be fun. Um, okay, so it starts like this. Hang on, hang on. So I've made the bath bomb. Wait, I'll turn it the right way. So there you can see the bath bomb, okay? So that's like just straight up um, a nice lilac -y bath bomb, okay? So that's step one. Done that, let it harden. Um, then step two, airbrush once. And you can see, air, I was so sad because like airbrushing is really new for me and I'm really, it's a learning curve. So I'm learning it and I'm like, you can barely see like the purple airbrush. Now purple is a quirky, weird color to work with and I knew that, but I was like, all right, if it's like you're painting it, you know how you put on your first coat of paint on a wall and you want better coverage, you do a second coat? I was like, all right, maybe I'll do a second coat and see what happens. So... Here's the second coat. And so you get a lot more definition, but you can see like the base and here's your airbrush. And then once this dries, I'll do the, the highlights on it. So we're at the point now where I need to do more of the um, purple highlighting, because I left some so you can see how it works. And hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully, this will work first. So this is a blend of mica. Mica is a skin safe um, colorant. 
that you can use on bath bombs with the exception of blues and greens. And I'm not even sure if the blues and greens are okay in Canada. For sure they're not okay in the United States. So I kind of just go, you know what? I do sell to American customers. So I just stay away from using the blue and green micas on any of my bath bombs. Okay, so this will make a little bit of noise. Remember last time when we were doing the um, unicorn horns? Okay, so we get it going and hopefully it starts to spray the purple and you can see it's starting to do it okay so it's ready to go so it's kind of like priming a pump and then basically I've got a little spinny uh, can you see it yeah my little spinny turntable and basically I push and pull and I'm spraying the color on if I want it more like controlled about where it is, I go closer, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm just doing the edges right around the outside of the lips. If I want more of a um, spray, I guess for lack of a better word, like uh, not as like tightly in, I just pull it back a little and let some of that spray come forward onto the lips. It will blow off a little bit of the extra, um, if there's any extra pieces of bath bomb that are just kind of laying there. So if you see little pieces flying, that's what that is. But then you can see how that, whoop, stay you, stay. I need to get like a whole mess for that. Oh, and I made a mess. Anyway, and you can see how that makes like your purple lips. Um, did I say that was mica? And I got lost on the mica in combination with rubbing alcohol. So my pretty, pretty lavender um, bath bombs right now. Hi, Graham. Nice to see you too. Um, smell a lot like rubbing alcohol, more so than than lavender. Okay, so we're going back to the noise. Fun things, and we all knew this, like things that you see on the internet and read on the internet aren't like necessarily 100% gospel truth. We knew this, um, but I need a, a bigger uh, compressor. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm not sure bigger is the right word, but a stronger maybe, stronger compressor for drawing up the, um, the color onto the, onto the bath bombs. And the only way I found this out was there is an amazing little place in Winnipeg. If you're an artist of any way, shape or form, it's called Artist Emporium on St. James. And they have the best customer service where it, they can I brought my my airbrush in and they actually took me through um, how to clean it, um, showed me the difference between this compressor and a larger one. Of course, the larger one's more expensive, but they're like, there's the difference. Hi, Kathy, how you doing? Um, so, I should have just got the the bigger one. I don't know what I was thinking. I was not thinking. Um, so I'm kind of kicking myself. But the next time I'm in Winnipeg, I'm going to stop by and pick up the, the larger one. Just because you get more, the more, and this makes sense, the more compressed air you have, uh, pulling up the liquid stronger, the more color you have. So possibly with a stronger compressor, um, I wouldn't have to do two layers of, of painting, like two times painting, to get the intensity of color that I'm looking for. But, that being said, you get more subtle effects with um, less pressure. So, I don't know, it could go either way. Now this one's kind of a little banged up on the corner, but seems to be doing okay but again also this is purple and purple is one of those quirky colors that it goes on dark and then it dries 
super light. So I'm going to pull this back just a little bit and it helps to cover up like that dinged area. And then I'll let you see it. And so that's my, my purple hearts. Now you're going to say, what else are we doing today? That doesn't sound super, super exciting because I'm banging things around. But can you see the difference? Now this one is only one um, spray and it will lighten considerably um, when it dries. So then I'll do my second coat. Okay, other fun things I'm doing. I don't know if I've shown you these. I think I did last week. Um, so they start out is pig butts, right? Super cute. Um, I am going to airbrush the pink around the outside, like, hang on, wait, wait, wait. I tried to do increments. A baking show is in my future. Um, so there's like the airbrush to the pink just around the outside. Super cute, right? I like how the airbrush kind of gives that really polished uh, feel to it. Um, and then what I do after it's dried, I think I do two with the pink as well, but I don't know if you can see, he's got like a little butt and his little piggy um, feet. Um, I, I hand paint those on and that's a little piggy butt. So I've done them in pink. You're gonna say, did you do a purple pig? I tried yesterday, my mold was still wet from cleaning it from doing these ones. So I didn't quite do the purple one, but that's on my radar to do a purple one. But I have here a white one and what are you smelling? Like? Oh, beach bum. I was like, what does that smell? I was like, that's beach bum. I'm going to do a brown um, exterior and I'm going to show you that one in like two seconds here because I think I'm, I'm going to save the pink one and just do that on my own but the brown one it almost looks like the piggy is out like in the pig pen which is super fun okay so what i do is i take my colorant i mix it because this is purple we don't want to use purple though we could use purple that'd be really cute i think uh, but we're going to do brown on the pig and hopefully this works because I did have issues with the brown previously clogging the um, the compressor. This is like the handy dandiest thing. It's just um, something to like raise, basically like you know a cake spinner. I don't know if you can see it, but this is just like a little mini one, and uh, it's great because then I'm not holding on to the bath bomb and but I can still rotate and get to the edges so it works really slick all right let's see if this will work if it doesn't I'll cry but we'll be okay and so basically you want to get rid of the purple which I just did and I don't know if you can see there's the purple and then it becomes brown almost like a copper all right here we go let's give it a try and basically you spray it on it's actually a lot of fun. I think I've said this for the last four weeks. I'm like, why did I not take art class? Because if you got to play with stuff like this in art class, sign me up. But basically, it's a dark brown that I'm going for. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint spots. So this is going to be like... Um, a Gloucester or a Hereford. I don't pick no pigs really, really well, but somewhere out there in the world, there are spotted pigs. And so these are going to be like gray spotted. It almost looks gray going on. It will dry into a brown. And if I'm not happy with it, here's the beauty of it. I can, um, I can find more of a copper and I can do a copper I believe this is gingerbread. Yeah, so it's a dark brown kind of color. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Stop you. And it's really interesting because the airbrush colors are different. Even though it's the same hand-painted color, it looks different on the bath bomb. So then you see how he has 
his little features there. Um, what I want to do more of though is more of a spray so that it catches the edges of like his little piggy tail. So then I come back here and I'm less directed right at um, the edge. I'm gonna do like a wider spray. And because I'm doing that wider spray, it catches all the little features. So I don't know if you can see this on the video, but you see the difference? How it's kind of caught those, the, the ridges and it highlights them, okay? I also really, really like these. I know this is how my brain works, but the piggy has like a smile. <laughs> They're super cute. Anyway, okay, so that's the piggy. Do you want me to see me paint him? Sure, we can do that because this time I came prepared for my painting. Um, so I have like a little cup and I'm gonna find my brown, which is over here. I'm not gonna do like his little cute little butthole or his feet, but I am gonna show you how I paint the spots on. It's really similar to um, how I painted um, the watermelon, uh, the watermelon um, bath bombs. I'm not sure how much detail you got on that, but okay. So what I have to find is the rubbing alcohol. Here it is here, and so I spray it in. Give it a stir with my paintbrush. Which paintbrush am I gonna use? This one. So I'm basically just making it into a paste. And you're gonna see, this is the exact same color that went into the airbrush. So it's fascinating, again, all part of like my learning curve, how, um, I could actually put this down, how when I'm painting it onto the, um, the pig, how it is a completely different color. And yeah, I'm going to airbrush this twice just because the airbrush is not um, nearly as dark as the circles. And basically, you just make your piggy spotted. People say they find painting very therapeutic and soothing. I find it, honestly, right now, because this is so new to me, I kind of feel like it's a nightmare. Because, like, once it's on, you can't change it. It's there to stay, and you've got to work with whatever weird thing um, you've painted. And it's strange, too, because the texture like it's not like painting on paper it's painting on gosh i don't even know how to describe it um maybe on paper towels maybe it's like similar to painting on on paper towels hi sandra how you doing did you see me airbrushing it's very exciting if you didn't you're gonna have to watch the replay and uh see how i do with my airbrush um the airbrush is like a tricky thing, and uh, I have figured out most of it. I'm just trying to figure out where to put spots on this guy. I'm assuming it's a guy. I have no idea. It could be a girl. My pig anatomy is not that strong. Um, I feel like, and then I'll show you the difference in the colors, and you'll really see. You'll be like, oh my gosh, that is hugely different. And I'll be like, yeah. Okay, so we're putting another spot over here. Okay, and then I'm gonna let you see. So there's my, my spotted pig. But do you see the difference? Like the hand painting is so much more intense, almost like a coppery color. And then I swear, it's the same paint in the airbrush and you get almost like this dusty brown. But I like it. Um, I, I'm going to darken it a little bit more on the exterior. Do you want me to try to do it now? Let's try to do it now. See what happens. It might work. It might be too fresh, but we'll see. Let's give it a try. Um, because it, it looks like the pig's been rolling in mud, which is kind of fun. So, all right. Let's give it a shoot here. Okay, airbrush. And go.
just going to double check. Other ways also to like change the color intensity would be to increase the amount that's in the bottle. But you have to be careful because micas are like tiny little fibers. And if you have too much in there, you're going to clog your airbrush. Which is not the end of the world, it's just lots of cleaning to get it back up to working for you. So I, I actually enjoy the airbrushing a lot. It's a ton of fun. I dare say it's the most fun. Like packaging, shrink wrapping is fun because there's just something satisfying about shrink wrapping something. But airbrushing is right up there. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of an overspray just to make our piggy not too, too white. Isn't it cute? Okay, now you have me here and now I'm going. So I'm like, all right, hang on. Let me grab one more brush. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. And then I'll let you get on with your day. Okay, so this is a copper color, which I swear that's, that spot looks very coppery to me, but okay. And I am going to hand paint his little butthole. <laughs> and his little feet, and then he's finished. Um, the one challenge to not having, hang on, uh, rubbing alcohol, not having a shop is, I don't get that instant gratification of, hey guys, what do you think of this? Like, because in a shop, you can tell right away um, how much interest in it is in it, and if people are buying it, and things like that. With, um, I don't like this color as much. I have more of a gold that I think I'm going to do. This is a little too dark, but that's okay. We'll do it dark and then let it dry. And then I'll put some gold over top of it. Mind you, it's not bad. It might be okay. I could maybe do a couple of different ones color wise. And just see it's so weird painting you can't um it's a word I'm, you can't brush like do you see how i'm dabbing uh if you brush at it like for these like tiny little details that are erased then it'll actually break off the piece whereas if you um dab at it you get a little bit more detail and i should not have it up where it's spinning around because that just makes my life hard. I don't know, this is a nice color. It's just, it's really, really close to the spots, which I'm not, like I, I've, I want a little bit more variance in there. So I think I'm gonna probably, go, this is what I do to myself. I'll probably go back in after it dries and just add some gold onto the base. But, okay, get ready for this. Ta-da! Isn't he cute? He's a bath bomb. Um, so, super cute. These ones smell like beach bum, I know. How, what smell do you make a pig smell like? I have no idea. Uh, but beach bum is what we went for. So, I've got like my pink guys. See, I like this goldy color a little bit better. It's a little bit more cartoony, I think. But this one's nice too. So, I've got... My pink pig. Got my brown spotted pig. Aren't they cute? I want to do a purple pig. Hopefully, uh, within the next few days, I can do a purple pig. Um, I'm having so much fun. The the one upside to like the pandemic is you get to, to play with all these things. So this is a bubble bar, um, and it's a penguin. Isn't it cute? So I, I made those this week. So um, as soon as I'm done, my afternoon is uh, airbrushing and painting these guys. Then I'm going to take some photos because I am the chief bottle washer and I do everything. So I will make the photos and then load them onto the web page. And then you should be able to get them online. Um, hopefully by this evening, if not first thing tomorrow morning. These, so much fun. 
Uh, this is the original, hang on. So this was the original and it is available online now. Um, it is scented, olive grove. So like very um, lemony, olivey, spa-like. Uh, was in the Mother's Day gift box. Then I was like, hey, what happens if you make it green? So here's sage lemongrass. Again, have to take a picture and then I'll load it onto the webpage. And then I was like, you know what? Purple would be pretty as a dahlia. Aren't those nice? I feel like this is something you would have like in a very elegant bathroom or, you know, if I had a, like a French chateau, these would be uh, in every washroom and it would just be lovely. So those are really nice too. So I made those as well and had some fun with those. And then you're gonna say, what's in the cute little pile in the back? And the cute little pile in the back is, I don't know if these will show up on, on video. Can you see them? It's a happy face. I don't know. I feel like there's too much glare or something. Can you see that? There we go. So there's the blue happy face. There's a blue, there's the pink, and the yellow is really difficult to see. But so there's like my neon. So I, that, those guys are not wrapped. None of these are wrapped because I'm taking photos and loading them up onto the web page. So that's my work with me Wednesday uh, this week, seven months until Christmas. Yay. And so that means soon, like within the next week or two, we're going to be starting to work on Christmas scents, Christmas designs. And, uh, but for the next couple of weeks, we're still very beachy, very summery, um, and trying to enjoy the summer that hasn't shown up quite yet. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in guys. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Stay safe.